Welcome and thank you for coming back. It's Tuesday the 19th of May. Now, the drug hydroxychloroquine has been in the news lately for various reasons and I just thought I'd start off by looking a little bit about hydroxychloroquine. Now, when I want to know about a drug, the first thing I do is I go to the British National Formulary. And I'm sure you've got something fairly similar in your country. This is the definitive version of the drugs that are allowed to be prescribed in my country, the British National Formula. I'm sure you'll have something fairly similar wherever, wherever you live. So let's start off with that now. There's the reference. You can check this out for yourself as always. Now, any drug that is going to have a pharmacological effect, any drug that's going to work is going to have side effects as well because it's a chemical substance that's being introduced into the body. So the British National Formula tells us about some of these side effects. Now, common or very common side effects. So abdominal pain, reduced appetite. Well, that's not a bad thing. You might lose a bit of weight, so that, that's good, especially if someone who's taking the drug is overweight. Um, diarrhea, fairly unpleasant side effect. <clears throat> now, this is slightly concerning. A common side effect of hydroxychloroquine is emotional lability. Now, lability means that the mood can change very quickly. So someone who is emotionally labile can be up and down. They can be a bit high, then a bit low, a bit hypomanic, then a bit depressed, or they can be laughing, and then a few seconds later, they can be crying. This is emotional lability. So emotional lability is generally not the sort of feature we are looking for in uh, leaders. Other side effects include headache, nausea, skin reactions, vision disorders and vomiting. Uncommon side effects, alopecia, um, hair falling out, uh, uh, swelling of the eyes, dizziness, eye disorders, hair colour changes, nervousness, neuromuscular dysfunction, retinopathy, uh, um, that's inflammation of the retina, the disease of the retina at the back of the eye, uh, fits, seizures, tinnitus is ringing in the ears. Um, now, um, they're, they're uncommon side effects, to be, to be fair. But what we always teach student nurses is, is you must give the right dose of the right drug to the right person at the right time via the right route. All those things need to be correct. So if, if, if the dose is wrong, it's very toxic in overdose. So chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine are a problem in the overdose situation. Overdose is extremely hazardous, hazardous, hazardous <laughs> and difficult to treat. Urgent advice from the National Poisons Information Service is essential. That's in the UK. Life-threatening features include arrhythmias. Now, that means abnormal rhythms of the heart. So the heart doesn't beat properly, which can have a very rapid onset. <clears throat> and of course, is potentially fatal if your heart's not beating properly and fitting which can be intractable so that is the brief on hydroxychloroquine from the british national formulary now the food and drug administration in the u.s uh, says it's received reports that hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine could have serious side effects and that the drug should only be taken under close supervision of a doctor in a hospital setting or clinical trial. So this is saying that doctors outside of hospital really shouldn't prescribe this drug. It should only be taken under supervision of a doctor in hospital, in a hospital um, or a clinical setting because of the, or a clinical trial, sorry, because of these dangerous side effects. Now, there was evidence that hydroxychloroquine was effective as an antiviral drug in vitro studies. This is on the bench, basically. In vitro means literally in glass. But that hasn't really transposed to the in vivo, in life situation. So I'll give you some evidence for that in a minute. Now, I know you are going to write in and say it only works when you give it with zinc. And there are reports that there are some efficacies with zinc, but it hasn't it's looking more likely it's the zinc that's beneficial rather than the hydroxychloroquine in COVID-19 disease. Having said that, I don't know. Trials are ongoing. 
but I do know that the Food and Drug Administration said it should only be taken in hospitals given by doctors, supervised or in a clinical trial. More to come on zinc, I think. There's some interesting things coming out about zinc. Now, the World Health Organization says there are currently no drugs licensed for the treatment or prevention of COVID-19. Now, I know what you're going to say now, that the World Health Organization has got a blotted copybook, to put it mildly. The World Health Organization has hashed up. But it doesn't alter the fact that they've got some of the world's best pharmacologists, pharmacists, doctors, some of the best people in the world working for them. So we have to listen to their publications. And here's their uh, nice poster on hydroxychloroquine. While several drug trials are ongoing, there is currently no proof that hydroxychloroquine or any other drug can cure or prevent COVID-19. The misuse of hydroxychloroquine can cause serious side effects and illness and even lead to death. And remember, one of the side effects is emotional lability. Coordinated trials are being currently conducted. But the bottom line is, at the moment, we don't have a drug. Now, this is immensely frustrating. You know, when I get sick, all I've got to do is go to the doctor and they'll give me a drug and I'll get better. That's kind of the philosophy in, in our minds. But of course, it's not true. It's by no means true. With a few illnesses, doctors can give a few drugs which are efficacious. But a pill for every ill is, is uh, not the nature of reality. So at the moment, frustrating though it is, we don't have a curative treatment. Now, I know there's promising things like yesterday we looked at monoclonal antibodies. There's many drug trials ongoing. We'll know in time, but at the moment we don't. So there's not possible for the World Health Organization experts. So let's call them the World Health Organization experts rather than the World Health Organization. Um, that they, They've nothing to offer at the moment. Now, while I was on this World Health Organization site checking that out, they have a great section called Mythbusters. So I thought, I thought it'd be worthwhile going through a few of these because we have looked at them at various times in the past, but it's nice to put a few things together because myths are dangerous. We need science. Doesn't mean to say that scientists won't let us down. Scientists will let us down. But science is an empirical methodology to try and intrinsically understand the nature of reality and that's what we need to do individual scientists might not be very good some are brilliant some will let us down um, but science is the way we need to go this is the way we discover the nature of this type of truth so while several drugs are ongoing there is no current proof that hydroxychloroquine works well, so we've said that misuse of hydroxychloroquine can cause serious side effects including emotional lability World Health Organization is coordinating, which is good. Now, they have a few other bits and bobs that are, are interesting. So, some actually are almost amusing. Um, now, I haven't mentioned garlic here. Um, there's reasons to think that eating garlic is a good idea, but there's nothing that we can say we can use it as a therapeutic. <clears throat> but it's certainly a good idea to eat, eat a wide variety of fruit and vegetables. So I wouldn't, wouldn't knock eating garlic in, in, in moderate amounts anyway. <laughs> Depends on your social life. Now, myths here. Adding pepper to your soup or other meals does not prevent or cure COVID-19. So peppers or chilli peppers have no evidence that they protect against COVID-19. Having said that, fruit and vegetables are good, but there's no evidence for chilies and peppers protecting against COVID-19 as such. COVID-19 is not transmitted through houseflies nor is it transmitted through mosquitoes. To everyone's great relief, I am sure. There is no evidence at all for insect vector-borne transmission of COVID-19. Many other diseases there are, dengue, malaria, of course, but um, not for COVID-19. Spraying and introducing bleach or other disinfectants into your body or onto your body will not protect you against COVID-19 and can be dangerous. So bleaches and other disinfectants, unless it specifically says so by the manufacturers, are for cleaning surfaces, not for cleaning you. 
and they are certainly not to be drank. We know that soap and water is very effective in killing this virus. If soap and water works, why go to anything else? Of course, when you're out of uh, the range of a sink with soap and water, alcohol 60%, sanitising gels are also good. But spraying or introducing bleach or other disinfectant into or onto your body, no, is not good. Drinking methanol, that's poisonous alcohol, ethanol, that's the normal alcohol that people drink in drinks, or bleach, does not prevent or cure COVID-19 and can be extremely dangerous. So <clears throat> do not drink alcohol because it will not protect you against COVID-19. In fact, it might reduce the efficiency of the immune system, but certainly methanol is poisonous. M, methanol alcohol begins with M, the same as morgue. If you drink methanol, you'll probably go to the morgue. Certainly if you drink enough of it. Um, all of these things are for external surfaces. Never to be taken, never to be drank. Now you might think, how could anyone be so stupid? But there's been more than 100 deaths in Iran, for example, from drinking bad alcohol under the mistaken belief that it is protective. It is not. The only place that alcohol has that I know of in this pandemic is for cleaning the skin with high concentrations of alcohol, 60% and above. Now, I've never mentioned this one before because I didn't want to draw attention to it, but 5G mobile networks do not spread COVID-19. I'm going to say anything about that again. It's, uh, it's rubbish. Uh, being able to hold your breath for 10 seconds or more without coughing or feeling discomfort does not mean you are free from covid from COVID-19, coronavirus disease, or any other lung disease. So this myth has got out that if you can hold your breath for 10 seconds, you're somehow all right. It's just nothing. It's based on nothing. It does not mean anything related to COVID-19 or related to any other respiratory disease. It is not a test that doctors would ever use. At least I've never seen a doctor use it in 40 years, so... Anyway, it's not, it's, not a, <clears throat> it's not an indication you haven't got COVID-19 or another respiratory disease. COVID-19 virus, uh, COVID virus can be transmitted in areas with hot and humid climates. Now, this was postulated in the early days. Back in January, we were talking about this. Will the disease spread in warmer weather? Will the summer protect us? Well, the answer is unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. The disease spreads in places with hot and humid climates as well, as it does in cold areas as well. So cold weather and snow cannot kill the new coronavirus. So when you cool the virus, even if you put it in a freezer, all that will do is preserve it. And we actually know that the virus lasts for longest, remains viable and potentially infective for longest at about five degrees centigrade. Taking a hot bath does not uh, prevent the new coronavirus. Now, having said that, you don't want your body to be cold if you've got an infection, but taking a hot bath as such is not a preventative treatment. Ultraviolet lamps should not be used to disinfect hands or other areas of your skin. The ultraviolet is harmful for the skin. Ultraviolet lamps are for surfaces like food preparation areas. They are not to disinfect the skin. Thermal scanners cannot detect COVID-19. Apparently some people in parts of the world believe this and it's strange. Now what the thermal scanners will do, of course, is they'll tell you if you have a fever. They can see the change in the body temperature. So they can detect people with fever. They can then be taken aside and tested for COVID-19. But many things can give you a fever <clears throat> and COVID-19 will not be detected by thermal scans as such. It will just indicate if there's a fever. And even then people could cheat it by taking Tylenol or Paracetamol. Right, some questions for you. Can regularly rinsing your nose with saline help prevent infection with the new coronavirus? Are antibiotics effective in preventing and treating new coronavirus? Are there any specific medicines to prevent or treat the new coronavirus? Well, I think you know the answer to these already. Regularly rinsing your nose with saline will not help prevent infection with 
COVID-19. <clears throat> it will not. The infection gets in in the lungs and the lower airways. But you don't want to rinse your nose with water anyway. The, the old saying is the only thing you should put in your nose or your ear is your elbow. So you can clean your nose out and your ears out with your elbow, but, but don't put anything else in there is the general rule of thumb. Antibiotics, of course, are not effective in preventing or treating COVID-19. Antibiotics only kill bacteria. Now, having said that, if someone has COVID-19 infection in the lungs, like any viral infection, or any viral infection anywhere in the body, really, that can predispose you to secondary bacterial infection. And it's quite possible that someone recovers from the initial viral infection, but then dies from the secondary bacterial infection. This happened a lot in 1918, 1919, H1N1 influenza pandemic, when of course there was no antibiotics. So many people treated with COVID-19 may need antibiotics for secondary bacterial infection, and they can be life-saving, but of course they will not interfere with the activity of the virus in any way. And unfortunately, as of now, there are no proven medications advised by the World Health Organization. Right, so I've got some interesting news from other countries and some interesting developments today, but I think I'll just leave that one for now. We'll just look at some of the most important people in this now, because obviously, without you watching, these videos will be utterly pointless. So let's look at some viewers now. This is uh, Rochelle and uh, Laurent watching in France. Hope you're not being distracted by the TV there, YouTube, and I'm glad to see you're watching in France. Good news. <clears throat> Uh, this is Rob in Staffordshire in England, who is taking vitamin D, I'm pleased to see. And he's got his mask ready for going outside. Well done, Rob. Uh, this is Robert in Norway. Now, what's Robert taking there? I can't quite see. It could be vitamin D. But he seems to be taking it with oily fish, so that's acceptable. Best to take your vitamin D with a, a fatty food. And there is evidence for omega-3s in oily fish promoting immunity. Uh, this is Robert, and I think Robert is in England, judging by his hat, but I can't quite remember. And it looks like he likes walking on Dartmoor, so yeah, I think we'll go for England, shall we, Robert? Do tell me if I'm wrong. This is Roger, who's got a solar farm installation. That's fantastic. I love solar panels. Now, I think Roger, sorry, Roger, did I say Robert? So it's Roger. Um, it's Roger, and I think Roger is somewhere in the States, but I do apologise, I can't remember. But delighted to see you using <laughs> renewable technologies and watching my videos, of course. This is Ron in Wisconsin. Good to know you're watching in Wisconsin, Ron. This is Rory. <clears throat> I think Rory's in the UK, but I'm not quite sure. Glad to see he's got a mask ready for going out there. Thank you, Rory. Now, this is Russ <coughs> from Kentucky, and Russ is a retired airline pilot. And... Uh, He's watching me instead of paying attention when he's uh, flying his uh, aeroplane there, look. No, that's not true. Sorry, I'm taking all that back. <laughs> Russ was at extreme pains to tell me that it is a simulator. So he now flies a simulator instead of flying a real aeroplane. Although I suppose you sometimes fly occasionally at weekends. Very convincing simulator, Russ. So you're taking me in completely until you... Uh, admitted that it was in fact a simulator so thank you for watching in your simulator russ uh, this is uh shamila in in kerala in india in southern india now d3 is good a lot of indians are short of vitamin d and uh, shamila is recommending black cumin seeds which i'm unable to recommend but um it makes sense that all these food products are potentially good for you. So black cumin seeds. I know they certainly taste nice when I make dal. 
So I would have no uh, no trouble using cumin seeds in my cooking. And this are the Bakers, Mr. and Mrs. Baker from Florida. Now, show my ignorance here. I think we're in Southern Pompano Beach. I'm pretty sure Southern Florida, isn't it? I'm pretty sure. But great to know you're watching in Southern Florida and also glad to see you're taking your vitamin D. What a huge screen. It must be a bit frightening seeing me so blown up, but I'm delighted you're watching Mr. and Mrs. Baker. And this is Tracy in the state of Ohio. So thank you for watching Tracy in Ohio. Good to know so many people in the States are watching. Thank you for the picture. And this is a uh, Vaida, Vaida. I'm almost, I'm certainly saying that wrong, Vaida. In Lithuania, one of the Baltic states. So great to know that you're watching up in the Baltic states. Thank you. <laughs> 